والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to the straight path from your host Fuad Muhammad. Israel, the so-called Jewish state, if it's correct to say the word Israel as the name of a country, was established in 1948. Today the Jews are claiming and they want to make Jerusalem the Jewish capital. But however, why are they so enthusiastic in making Jerusalem their capital and what are the history of of this country of Israel, where did the meaning of Israel come? We'll be discussing this on the straight path. But before I do, we'll take a short look at the report, at a report that talks about a bit of the history of Jerusalem and a history of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Take a look, inshallah. World is bright. Islam is my sight. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله مسجد الأقصى The proceeding is a brief summary on the history of Masjid al-Aqsa going back from 5,000 years since the time the Gutsiyun were dominating. Then from their family came Al-Qunan which were a people that had Arab background. They were a people that were good to Quds and so Quds was good to them. Quds became more developed with buildings and the population grew. The many olive trees in Quds were a symbol of love and a sign of gratitude to its people. During this time, Quds went through more than 25 different battles and still Quds and his people were in a good state. Quds is considered to be a main historic site filled with symbolic meanings and very unique city. Quds is like that of a bridge which joins between the heavens and the earth since many the Al. Quds is like that of a bridge since many prophets descended there like a fresh pure flowing river like a bright light for a traveler trying to find his way in the dark. Ever since the night of the ascension, Quds became the first Qibla for the Muslims. They all face the direction of Quds with their hearts, before actually seeing it with their eyes. Quds lived in the hearts of Muslims, before they lived in Quds. And every Muslim was anxious to visit Quds. Year 636, according to English calendar, Quds became under the rule of Umar ibn al-Khattab. May Allah be pleased with him, the second Khalifa of Islam. Quds has a very interesting past. Quds reached its peak in advancement after becoming under the rule of Islam, such that many other nations were surprised. And why shouldn't have Quds surpassed other nations? And the one who opened Quds to the Muslims from the very first was our noble messenger, peace be upon him. It is reported that the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, There will always be a group from my ummah upholding the truth, victorious over their enemies. They are not harmed by those who oppose them, nor by what afflictions befall them, until the command of Allah comes to them. The Sahabas asked, O messenger of Allah, and where are these people? He said, They are by Bayt al-Maqdis and around Bayt al-Maqdis. Masjid al-Aqsa, or the sacred Quds size, reaches 146 dulma, 1,000 cubic meters. And it includes all of the area that is in the vicinity of the fence around Masjid al-Aqsa. In it are many walkways and places of shade to sit, which the kings and rulers had built. 
There are many places for drinking fresh water. The most popular of them is that which was built by Qaytabiyya. And there are more than 25 wells of fresh water therein. This is the famous Masjid al-Aqsa that the Umar ibn al-Khattab lay out for it its future plans. As for its present day appearance, that was begun by the Khalifa Abdul Malik ibn Mirwan and completed by his son Walid who inherited the caliphate from him in the year 705 according to the English calendar. It was a custom of the old to light up candles around the sacred masjid al-Aqsa. There used to be a sum 1,700 candles around the masjid and whoever wasn't able to visit the masjid they would send candles and oil so that it could be used to light up around the masjid. There is no disagreement amongst the historians that the Honorable Dome of the Rock Masjid has one of the most beautiful and unique architectural designs on the face of this planet. Raja ibn Haya al-Kindi, who is from Baysan, and Yazid ibn Islam, who is from Quds, were the two engineers that were responsible for overseeing the building and planning of the masjid, which took place in the year 691, according to the English calendar, under the rule of Abdul Malik ibn Mirwan. The Umayyah Empire certainly contributed tremendously to the development of Quds, and a creative person hand carved Surah Yasin, which is said to be the heart of the Quran, in the heart of Palestine, Quds, which was filled with pure belief of Tawheed throughout all times. The sacred area of Quds has ten doors to enter into it, and the city of Quds, which is now called Baldat al Qadima, the old city, has seven doors in addition to some of the ancient doors which are now closed to the sacred area of Quds and to the city. The fence around Quds was destroyed more than 17 times during its history, but it would rapidly de redevelop after each time. The fence around Quds was destroyed more than 17 times during its history, but it would rapidly redevelop after each time. The last renovation that was done was in the time of Sultan Suleiman al Qanuni in the year 1536, according to English calendar. Around it was built four extremely high minarets and 34 towers. The sacred area of Quds is filled with blessings, honor and beauty. Its minarets sing the praises of Allah. Its domes high in beauty climb the skies. Its places of prayer point to none other than purity. And its numerous meeting places hold tight memories of noble people. On July 30th, 1980, the Parliament of Israel and its two main political parties joined together for a legislation that would make Quds the capital of Israel. We must defend the sacred city of Islam, which is considered to be the third sacred city. We must be willing to defend it with all our might and power and not be miserly with our money and blood in doing so, especially in a time where people have forgotten Quds and forgotten its sacredness. In just a match of 100 years, the Masjid al-Aqsa was changed into an office and the Dome of the Rock into a synagogue and the prayer area that the Muslims would pray in into a stable for horses. The Adhan was no longer heard in Quds until Allah willed for the sacred city to return by the hands of one who would remove this oppression and stand for justice. So then came Salah al-Din al-Ayubi and entered Quds carrying the flag of Tawheed after the Battle of Hittin in the year 1178 according to English calendar. He and his victorious army prayed there together wearing their armor following the honorable legacy of our noble prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. If you're wondering what the word Quds mean in the report, it means Jerusalem. And today's topic is about the history of Israel and Jerusalem and why they are so uh, enthusiastic in making it the Jewish state. We have a guest to talk about this, but we'll take a short break and we'll be back right after this. My world is bright, Islam is my sight. 
Now reaching every corner of the world, watch Huda via live streaming on www.huda.tv. The world of Islam at your fingertips. Huda, a light in every home. My world is bright. Islam is my sign. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're back and you're watching The Straight Path. Today we're talking about the history of Israel and the history of Jerusalem. We also, we're also going to shed some light on what is Judaism, what is the Jewish faith. Maybe lack of understanding what there really is, is lack of reaching what, is, what we want in that area called peace. Well, to talk more about this topic, we have with us Brother Ahmed Rajab. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi It's a pleasure having you back here on The Straight Path. Thank you very much. We're talking about, about a very touchy and interesting topic, many of which, uh, a, a topic of which many Muslims don't, don't have any knowledge about it, they don't have any knowledge about it, nor they see it very um, encouraging to find out more about it. But I'm sure if we really do understand about it, about this topic, then it would give us a better understanding of the conflict in Palestine. My first question to you, uh, Brother um, Ahmed, is that we hear the state of Israel, the children of Israel. Who is really Israel? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, by the name of Allah, the most uh, gracious, the most uh, merciful. Uh, first of all, we to before we start to talk about uh, how we can solve the problem of Israel or uh, the Palestinians, we need to understand who is the other part, mm -hmm. uh, so we can understand them better and deal with them in a better way. First of all, Israel. Who is Israel? Uh, if we read uh, the Quran as well, uh, as the, the Bible, we will see that um, Israel is uh, Prophet Jacob, who is Yaqub in Arabic. And uh, the changing of his name has a story behind it. Uh, if you read the story in the Bible, you will see that it's a very odd story. Mm -hmm. Immediately, you will feel uh, shaken if you read it. In Genesis 32, uh, you will see that um, Prophet Jacob... He was walking uh, according to the Bible, and from the Christian point of view, he met God, God in flesh, mm -hmm. as a man. And he was in wrestling, like they are wrestling together. And uh, God couldn't overpower Jacob. Mm -hmm. It's very, azim, yani, yeah. uh, he couldn't. Mm -hmm. So... Um, and even though that that uh, he's God, but it, it shows that the struggling to the point that Jacob hold God, and God told him, "Please leave me alone. I have to go. The dawn is coming." So Jacob told God, "Don't. I will not let you go till you give me the blessings." So who's that man supposedly to be God? He told him, "What's your name?" And then he asked himself. Uh, he, he told him, I, my name is Jacob. He said, you from now, your name is not Jacob, your name is Israel. So this is the story of changing the name from Jacob to Israel. The Jews, they don't believe that this man was God. Mm -hmm. They believe that he wasn't just an angel. Mm -hmm. But the Christian, they say that he is God. Mm -hmm. And if you, from a neutral point of view, when you read the, the statement, it has to be God. Because it says... After he told him that your name uh, is Israel, mm -hmm. Jacob made a comment and he said, and I saw God face to face. Yes. So now we can see why the Christians are saying that he saw God and that was God who was wrestling with him. Mm -hmm. Of course, anyone who has a right mind, he will refute the whole story. Yes. Uh, after this, um, we know now the, the story of the name of Israel. Mm -hmm. Jacob had 12 sons. Yes. And those are the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay. And after those uh, many years, the uh, um, prophet Moses came. And after Moses, you see that Moses were thus just with one of those tribes, not all of them. Okay. 
And after this, there was one tribe, and the head of the tribe, his name is, was Judah. Mm -hmm. Judah. Okay. So the people who were ruled by Judah, they want to call themselves something mm -hmm. to be distinguished from the other tribe. children of Israel. Uh -huh. So they call themselves uh, Jewish people, the Jewish people. Okay. If you go through... Um, and they want to call their, their religion something. Yes. So they call it, according to Judah, they called it a Judaism. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm challenging anybody, anybody that can show me one word, the word of Judaism, in their book. In the, in the Jewish books, there is no one single word that says Judaism. Mm -hmm. You will not find it. So even though that they call it the Judaism religion, there is no such thing called Judaism religion. The religion, in fact, it's a monotheism religion. Yes. So if you go back to the reality, nobody should be called a Jewish person as a religion uh, description, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but as a race. Okay. Uh, uh, is, will describe him so, more. So Judah was was a person, a man. Yes, was a person, was a man. He was not a prophet or anything. He was just the leader of the tribe, or the or the king of this tribe, and they want to call themselves something to be different than the other tribes. Mm -hmm. So they call themselves uh, the Jewish people. Yeah. Okay. You just said it's it was a religion of monotheism. Yes. Um, so what really is the Jew, Jew, the Jewish religion today? What is it really about? It's the same as before. They have, uh, they have to believe there is only one God mm. and uh, th there is no comparison uh, between him or anything uh, else or anyone else. Even there, they have in the Old Testament in Numbers 23, 19, that says, God says I'm, uh, that God is not a man and he is not a son of man. That it's impossible that he will be a man and it's impossible that he will be a son of man. Yes. And nothing is like him and he is like nobody. Mm -hmm. So they believe their point of view of God is the same as Muslims, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. But they have laws that they have to follow. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very uh, complicated laws. Some of it um, is too uh, difficult for them to, uh, to follow, ac actually. Mm -hmm. um, for example? For example... If you see, uh, one of the things that I always show it to people, that this book, it's impossible to be all of it from God. Mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things uh, they say, if a woman commit adultery, and you want to know if she, what she, if she is guilty or not, then bring the priest, and he will bless the water, put water in a bucket, and put sand or dust in the water, and she has to drink it. If she's swollen, then she's guilty. If she's not swollen, then she's innocent. Mm -hmm. And this is in the book. And this is in their book. Then it, what in the, why in the world they don't do this now? Why Bill Clinton, they could do this easily without the DNA or anything like that. Mm -hmm. you know, so that shows how things are ridiculous that they put it to increase the importance of the priests. Mm -hmm. Because priest wants to be very important and they want to show how, how much power they have. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that they cannot really follow, even these days. Yes. Um, and they have other things that they cannot, for example, eat the chicken and egg at the same time. They cannot mm -hmm. do this. They cannot eat milk or any milk product and meat. Because milk is made from, uh, came from a cow or something like that. So they made it, and you, they cannot even cook milk or, or uh, milk product uh, in a pot and use the same pot for meat. Mm -hmm. It's too tough. You have to make some pots for meat and some pots for other things. Interesting. Yes. And uh, one of the things that is really very difficult for them is the Sabbath, mm -hmm. which is the Saturday. Okay. They are not allowed to do anything. And when I'm saying anything is means anything. They are not allowed to work. They are not allowed to cross the street carrying something. They are not allowed to even um, tie a knot. Uh, they are not allowed to, uh, to help anybody. Um, so it's really very difficult uh, to, to follow these laws. And Allah made, made it so hard on them because they are hard people. Mm -hmm. They were questioning too much. They go to details and that's why it keeps 
it kept being uh, more difficult on them more and more and more. Very interestingly that all these laws, it's, uh, it's vague. It's very vague laws that you cannot really understand or how to know how to follow it unless you read the Talmud. Mm -hmm. And they have two books. Okay. The Torah, which is the, the they say this is the revelation of um, uh, Moses and we believe the same thing, mm -hmm. the revelation of God to Moses. Mm -hmm. And the Talmud, which they call it the revelation, the oral revelation that it's been passed through um, in an oral way. It's like hadith yes. in, in our uh, religion. Yes. Uh, so, for example, they say um, in Sabbath, we are not allowed to work. But the, in the Talmud, it shows what kind of work that we are not allowed to do. Mm -hmm. So this, it's like in, in Islam, in the Quran, it says we have to pray. But in hadith, it teaches us how, how to, to pray. pray. Yes. Um, it's, the same, it's the same thing. Mm. Uh, so th that's why they have any Jew, real Jew, has to uh, follow these two books. Yes. The what what and, about uh, the, Torah. The, the Torah that they're, they're following? Is it, um, do they have different types of Torah? Like how the, the Bible uh, has different version? Do you have different version of the Torah? No, they don't have different versions, but they might have different uh, translations. They might have uh, different translations uh, from, uh, Eng both are English. Mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. uh, they are different in the translation. But they have one, one book. They, they are not different from okay. each other. Yes. I want to take you a bit from the topic, uh, Brother Ahmed. Um, many times we hear Judaism and Zionism used in the same sentence. Okay. Why? Well, it's because uh, Zions uh, or the Zionists, uh, usually, usually, I'm saying usually, not all the time, usually mm -hmm. they are Jews. Okay. But not every Jewish is Zionist. Okay. And uh, let's go. Let's go back a little bit to um, why they want to establish Israel. Okay. What, mm -hmm. what is the story behind mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Israel and the Promised Land, and this is the all uh, always the the reason of the conflicts between uh, Muslims in general and the the, the Jews. Mm -hmm that the Jews are saying that Israel is their promised land. Yes. And the Muslims are living there. Mm -hmm. And how come you kick me out from my, my place? And yes. you say that God gave it to you. Yes. Well, let's go back to their Bible, to their book. And we show them that they have no right for this promised land. Yes, it's true. It was promised for them. Mm -hmm. But in conditions. Okay. There were there was some conditions uh -huh. that they had to follow. Okay, what were these conditions? Okay, let me read some passages from the Bible. Okay, okay? no problem, no problem. For example, in Deuteronomy four, verse one, it says, "Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I am about to teach you." This is God is talking to them. Mm -hmm. Follow them, so they so that you may live and may go and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your father, is giving you. Mm -hmm. It's very important to, um, to stress on this part, which it says, Hear now, o Israel, the laws. Mm -hmm. I am about to teach you. Yes. There are laws yes. that he is teaching you, teaching them. Follow them that you may live. You may. You may yes and may not, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. According mm -hmm. if you follow these laws or you don't follow these laws, yes. okay? Uh -huh. So, unfortunately, some of them, they just take, okay, he gave us the land and ignore the part that they have to follow and teach and listen to what are the laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after this, in Deuteronomy 4, verses 25 to tw 27, okay, you will see here, uh, that uh, Allah is talking to them. After you have had children and grandchildren and have lived in the land a long time, if you then become corrupt and make any kind of idol, mm -hmm. doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, your God, and provoking Him to anger, what is the consequences? I will call heaven and earth as witness against you this day that you will quickly perish. Subhanallah. 
from the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Mm -hmm. So now, if they become bad, if they do evil, if they don't follow the laws, the consequences is that they will quickly perish yes. from the land. Yes. Not from the world, not from, from the land. Mm -hmm. Okay. After that, they did really do evil. So there was punishment in Deuteronomy 28, 62. You who were as numer numerous as the stars in the sky will be left but few in number because you did not obey the Lord your God. So you see now, the Jews mm -hmm. were before Jesus, before Christ, before Prophet Muhammad, and still they are the lowest number among all the religions. There are only 15 million. So, uh, and in Daniel 9, uh, verse 11, all Israel has trang uh, transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgment written in the laws of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. So, so all these passages yes. and all these verses shows that they disobeyed God. They didn't follow the law. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Allah perished them from the land and scattered them among the nations. So it's not, after that, it doesn't become the promised land anymore? Yes and no. Okay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really He uh, punished them but after this, he gives them another chance. Mm -hmm. But the chance has a condition. Okay. And they didn't follow it again. Okay. And um, before we go uh, this uh, part, I would like to mention that this, the reestablishment of the Israel has many um, passages in the in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the conditions are that they have to follow the Messiah. They had to have a Messiah, okay. Christ. Mm -hmm. Of course, they don't believe in Jesus. So who is the Messiah then? Who is the Messiah? This is very, very important question. They don't believe in Jesus. And if I'm a Jewish person mm -hmm. and I live in these days, yes. I have all the rights to do not believe if I hear the story from Christians. I have all rights to do not believe that Jesus is Messiah. Why is that? Why? Because the signs, there is signs and, and uh, symbol of uh, the description of the Messiah in, the, in their books. Mm -hmm. It says, for example, in Psalms 91, it talks about the Messiah that God concerning him, mm -hmm. and this is what it says, and God concerning you, he will send angels to lift you up so your foot will not strike a stone. Mm -hmm. This is when? When he asked God to save him. And God says, I heard his prayers and I saved and rescued him. Okay, we'll continue that story, Brother Ahmed. We'll take a short break here on the straight path as we continue to talk more about Judaism and the history of Israel. Now my world is bright. Islam is my side. The Muslims in particular will uh, have very good knowledge of Islamic religion and Islamic law and then will run their lives according to the injunctions of Allah. It will enable them to know how to live peacefully with them and at the same time practice Islamic religion or follow the injunctions of Allah as requested and required by the Allah. Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. You're watching The Straight Path. We're talking about Judaism and the history of Israel. And we're joined by our dear brother, Brother Ahmed Rajab. Um, just before this, you said that the Jews have no right to believe that Jesus was the Messiah 
the way the Bible described him. Is this correct? Y yes. Uh, what I'm saying is, if if you read their book, mm -hmm. you will see that the Messiah or Christ has to. They, they have their his description, mm -hmm. his story. Mm -hmm. So they are waiting for that man. Yes. If uh, the Christian says that this is Jesus, this is the Messiah, this is the way we look at him, the Jews should say, no, this is, will be the opposite of what we believe. Mm -hmm. But guess what? If Muslims tell them the story of Jesus from the Muslim point of view or the Islamic point of view, they have no ch other choice but to believe that he is Messiah. Okay. For example, mm -hmm. they have in Psalms 91, mm -hmm. it says the following. For he will come, he is God. For yeah. he will commend his angels concerning you. Mm -hmm. You is the Messiah. To guard you in all your ways. Guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up. In their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Okay. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra, because he loves me, says the Lord. I will rescue him. Mm. I will protect him, for he acknowledged my name. Now, for Allah's sake, if I ask somebody, if the Christ, if the Jews believe that the Messiah the angels will come to rescue him that his foot will not strike a stone. Mm -hmm. How come you can, con as a Christian, you can convince him that the Messiah was crucified on the cross? Uh, interesting. You understand? Yes, yes. Because even if in Islam we say that it was not him on the cross, but God lifted him up. Mm -hmm. Exactly? Yes. This is exactly the description of the Messiah. SubhanAllah. In their book. Yes. So there is a contradiction between Jesus' story mm -hmm. in, in, about them, uh, to them, and our story about Jesus to them. Yes. That's why they don't believe that uh, the Messiah should be should get hurt. Mm -hmm. Another thing. In Deuteronomy 13, mm -hmm. it says the following: If a prophet, or one who uh, foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a miraculous sign or wonder and if the sign or wonder of which he has spoken takes place and he says let us follow other gods and let us worship them you must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer the Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart or, or with all your soul. Mm -hmm. Listen to this. That prophet or dreamer must be put to death. Okay. Here it says, if there is a prophet or a dreamer, mm -hmm. he makes miraculous things. Yes. Wonders. And oh, yes. it took, take place. Yes. And if he tell you, come and worship other gods beside the gods that you know. Yes. Don't believe in him. It's just God is testing you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this prophet or that dreamer, he will, be, he will die. Yes. Now, if you take Jesus' story from the Christian point of view, and you present it to the Jews, and you tell them, yes, he was making wonders. Yes. And according to the Christians, he was talking about Trinity, mm -hmm. which is something new to the Judaism, monotheism. Yes. So they will tell you, no, we are monotheistic uh, people. Mm -hmm. We will not believe in you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and this man has to be put on death. He will die. And you said that he died. So he is not the Messiah. Okay. SubhanAllah. So it shows that Islam, Islam really uh, would support this perspective from, from the Jewish perspective. Exactly. Of, of that Messiah is Jesus, but from the Muslim, uh, how, the, how, how Islam described him to be. Yes. Subhanallah. So Islam really described Jesus and described uh, Jesus accordingly to what fit in Judaism. Uh, and uh, let's say not Judaism because there is no such religion called Judaism. It's just a race. Um, because even we, 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 as we mentioned before, Judah himself... Mm -hmm. 
existed after Moses. Yes. So what we call uh, Moses then? Uh, Jewish person, how come? He's mm -hmm. not Jewish person. Yes. Because the word Judaism was not ex did not exist yes. in the days of Moses. Uh, so, yes, in Islam, it solved this problem and mm -hmm. take it away. Okay, some of the viewers may saying, uh, okay, all the, all the contradictions between Judaism and Christianity, yet let us come back to today's world. We find a lot of Christian states really supporting Israel and their cause, Yanni. Yes. Why is this? Okay, first of all, we have to mention that uh, the Christian support, uh, some Christians support some Jews. Okay. Not all Christians support all Jews. Okay. But who are those Christians and who are those Jews? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will find, uh, interestingly, that uh, in the late of the 1800s, um, you will find that the Zionism movement started, and mm -hmm. it's a secular uh, Jewish movement, a no. secular Jewish movement, not a religion or, or religious uh, movement. After this, at the same time, Another sect or another theology, a Christian movement, start to appear. And this um, uh, church or this uh, way of doctrine or this doctrine in Christianity, they are not as the traditional Christians who are for uh, just uh, spread the word or the gospel of Jesus to the Gentiles. But you will see the new ones are... Uh, evangelists who are interest, still interested in the people of, uh, of uh, Israel mm -hmm. and still interested in the Jews. Yes. And some even Jews who they call themselves ultra-Orthodox. Okay. Ultra-Orthodox Jews. They exist. They are about 50% uh, of the Jewish people population in the world. They are against Israel. Oh, really? Yes, they are against the existence of Israel. Mm -hmm. They consider it as a sin. That, uh, because if you read the scriptures in the, in, the, in the Bible, you will see that the reestablishment of Israel has to be a divine uh, reestablishment, not a secular movement. It okay. has to be God who do, do it, or the Messiah. There, there, there are still Jews who believe this. Yes, so there are still Jews who would really have their belief that is close to the Islamic belief. That's correct? That's uh, absolutely yes. Okay. okay. And I tell you something. Um, in Murfreesboro, in Tennessee, mm -hmm. when uh, the war of Gaza happened uh, last uh, December, mm -hmm. we asked to make a protest uh, in the square. Yeah. And you will not believe that some of the protesters were Jews with us supporting the case of Gaza mm -hmm, mm -hmm. against Israel. They consider Israel as a sin to exist. It's a sinful thing to exist. Yeah. Uh, but, um, okay, looking at, looking at it, which opinion is more correct? To the setting up of Israel or their opinion, like the, like the Jews that joined you, like the, that joined you guys? Um, which is the opinion? If you really look into their scriptures, which opinion is more correct? The opinion of those who are against Israel. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because this is, the scriptures is very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, it talks about um, why uh, or when uh, they can reestablish Israel. Okay. For example, it says in Deuteronomy 30, mm -hmm. uh, from verses 1 to 20, when, when you and your children return to the Lord, your God... And obey him with all your heart and with all your soul, according to everything I command you today. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortune and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. So there, what is the condition? The condition is that they have to obey him with all their hearts and with all their souls. The problem here. Yes. That the law that they have to rule the country, they don't follow it. Israel is a secular country, mm -hmm. not as people think it's a religious country. They don't follow the law of Moses to run it. Okay. So they break the condition to establish 
uh, Israel. This is number one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Number two, uh, it says in a different um, uh, part mm -hmm. that God will send a king yes. to them. And that king, uh, he has to be a one king, which is the Messiah. Yeah. For example, in Ezekiel 37, it says, there will be one king over all of them, and they will never again be two nations or be divided into two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. My servant, David, will be king over them. Mm -hmm. So they say, okay, my servant, uh, my king, Dave, uh, king David, king David died yes. long time ago. And after this, uh, you will see in the same passage mm -hmm. that uh, David... It says, David, my servant, will be their prince forever. Which that, what does that mean? It means that he's not really the King David uh, that he's talking about, but there is another king that who will come and, and uh, will lead them. So who, who, who will be this king? He, this is the problem. They were waiting for the Messiah, and they thought that the Messiah will be a king. Okay. So when they saw Jesus, that he's a poor man, a normal man, so they said, that's impossible to be the Messiah. We are waiting for a king, mm -hmm. a king that will rule all of us. Yes. But the Christians, they say, and we believe that, even the passages in the, in the Christians, uh, you will see, for example, in Matthew uh, 27, 11, Meanwhile, it says, Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. So, yes, Jesus, he is the king of the Jews. He came to rule them. Mm -hmm. uh, but they refused. Even in the book of the Christians, they said how, how far they went with him, that they refused him, they rejected him, and they deny that he is the king of the Jews because they belittling him. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we talk about uh, why then some Christians uh, uh, follow and uh, help them, Yes, yes. We will see that, number one, there are uh, some scriptures that they follow and um, they, they uh, follow it uh, regardless anything. Mm -hmm. And they cut it from the context. Okay. For example, they say in the Genesis 12, I will bless those who bless you. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. And whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Here is the problem. They say you is Israel. So whoever bless Israel, mm -hmm. God will bless him. Whoever curse Israel, God will curse them. Okay. But there is a problem. Okay. If you go wider, mm -hmm. a verse before and a verse after, you will see it this way. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him. Okay, how did Abraham reach in there? Exactly. So you here is not Israel, it's Abraham. Yeah, of course. Of course. Right? Yeah. So you have a very strange way that they uh, uh, approach the Christian. Mm -hmm. They say to the Christians, we believe that the Messiah will come. And you believe that the Messiah will return. Mm -hmm. So both have the same goal or waiting for the same person. Yeah. Okay? Therefore, for him to return, we have to reestablish the temple. Yes. If we don't reestablish the temple, he will not come for us and he will not return for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of the Christians support them because they want the Messiah to come. They want to uh, make uh, things quicker. But uh, let, let us look from the Islamic perspective now, the return of Prophet Jesus. We do believe in this. How does all of this come together? Are the, the Messiah they're looking for is different from the Messiah we're looking for? No, we are looking for the same Messiah of the Christians mm -hmm. and the same Messiah of the Jews. Mm -hmm. But each one of them, they look at him in different way. So what reestablishing the synagogue has to do with this? This establishing because they believe that the temple 
uh, Jesus will not come back or Messiah will not come back mm -hmm. unless the temple exists. Okay. This is their belief. But there is a problem here. Mm -hmm. I think that we have to talk to the Jews and the Christians at the same time about Islam, not about this problem. Because if we talk to them about Islam and we convince them about Islam and they become Muslim, the whole thing will be solved. Yes, because uh, actually where, where, where the shortcoming from the, from the Bible is and the shortcoming from the Thamud is where Islam filled up everything and completed it perfectly. Exactly, exactly. Especially if you read the Bible and you see that some Jews went to John the Baptist, mm -hmm. Sayyidina Yahya, and they asked him, are you uh, Elijah? Mm -hmm. Are you the Messiah? Are you the prophet? And he said, I am not Elijah, and I am not the Messiah, and I am not the prophet. So, that means they are waiting for Elijah, and they are waiting for the Messiah, and there is another prophet who will come after the Messiah they are waiting for. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Prophet Jesus said that John the Baptist is Elijah. Okay? And the Messiah is Jesus. Mm -hmm. So, who is left? Prophet Muhammad. If they believe in him, the problem is solved. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. So we need first to talk to them, to, to convince them about Islam and to talk to the Christians as well and tell them um, that uh, the establishment of, of Israel is, is a sinful, especially that there are 50% of the Jewish population are against Israel establishment and they call themselves the ultra Orthodox Jews. And uh, we just have two minutes before we wrap up the program. And if Israel didn't really, and we see the e the evilness of of, of the establishment of the state, mm -hmm. especially when so many lives are lost, so many homes are taken away uh, forcefully in a tyrannic way, um, we see so many destruction. Can this all, as you said, be some of the evils because the the very first condition was not met? You know, uh, the best answer I heard from this was from the Jew. Mm -hmm. The Jewish people, the real Jews, mm -hmm. um, the ultra-Orthodox, they say they were de debating with the, uh, the Zionists. Mm -hmm. And they said, how come you are doing this in Israel and they call this the land of Lord, the land of God? It's impossible. And they told them their answer that the Talmud says that we are allowed to take the land with the permission of other nations. The real Jews responded, but you forgot the permission of the most important nation, the people who live in. Mm -hmm. They didn't take their, their permission. Because they really, the Talmud tell them that they can take back their land in peaceful, in peaceful way if they take the permission of all nations. Yeah. But they didn't take the permission of the most important people, the people of the land itself. SubhanAllah. Brother Ahmed, if, what, what, what if, can... The, 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 the summary that I can put, but what you've, all you've said there is the Muslims lacking two things, lacking to know their own religion and lacking to know what's around them in the world. And if we can get these two things together, Brother Ahmed, I think we can do a great deal in telling the truth to every nation. This is true. We have to teach all Muslims, and not all Muslims, but the Muslims who want to do something. And I believe that the word is stronger than any rockets or any bomb or anything. You can change uh, people's votes in America if you teach them. I saw many people change their opinion totally mm -hmm. about the case of in the Middle East when you talk to them and you show them evidence. And you see them in their opinion in the votes and, and their opinion in the comments that they make. Brother Ahmed, thank you very much for being with us on the Straight Path today. And we hope to continue with this topic and continue to talk about how Islam has the solution for every gap that other religions have, inshallah. Thank you very much. Okay, that's it for today uh, on the Straight Path. If you have any questions for Brother Ahmed or any comments for the show, you can write to us, straightpath at huda.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. is my sight Now I found the light After those long dark nights Now my world is bright Islam is my sight Now my world is 